Hi there, great to see you back. Today's tutorial on Home Assistant is about using automations and buttons to run the exact same actions. Because sometimes you want to have an automation that runs at a certain event or at a certain time, but you also want to have a button to do it manually. And next to that, the outcome of these actions will be shown as a state on that button. Difficult? No, it's not. And I'm going to show you how. So, we're going to toggle the power in a specific room using an automation and a button, and next to that, on that button, the state of the power is shown. For that, we need some elements in Home Assistant, and I'm going to show you first what elements we use and how they are connected with each other. Okay, so these are the elements that we are going to need in Home Assistant to get this to work. First, we start with a button. This is a custom button and this button shows the status of the result of the automation. So it will be green or gray. And I'm going to show you how to install it later on in Home Assistant. This button is going to trigger a helper. And in our case, we are going to use an input Boolean helper and I called it power underscore room. So that helper can be switched to on and off. So that is basically what this button does. It switches the helper on and off by pressing on the button. Next to that, we have an automation that will toggle the power on weekdays at a specific time. So that switches also on and off the helper. So in this case, the automation one and the button do the same thing. They both toggle the helper. Then based on this helper, another automation is triggered, and that's actually the automation that toggles the room. So in this automations, all the actions are there that will be triggered. So you need two automations and one helper. And then you say, yeah, but why should I do it like this? This is really powerful because you can also make like a chain of helpers and each helper triggers another helper. So I'm going to show you how that works in another example. In this case, we have switch one. Switch 1 will trigger helper 1 on and off. Next to that, we have automation 1, and automation 1 switches also helper 1 on and off. So far, so good. It's exactly the same as the previous example. And now, what you see now is that based on this helper, two automations get triggered. So you can basically trigger multiple automations based on the value of that helper. And now, in the second step, what you can do is create another helper, but helper 2, is being triggered by automation three. So in this case, for instance, if you press switch one, helper one is switched, then automation three is triggered and automation three triggers also helper two in specific circumstances. Next to that, you can create a switch two and switch two will also switch on and off helper two. And then you can create another automation, automation four, and automation four is being triggered by helper two. So I hope it's a little bit clear what I'm trying to say here. So it's basically a chain of helpers that you have, and you can let multiple automations switch other automations by using helpers. So let's dive into Home Assistant now to set it up. We need a custom button and we need a helper. Let's start with creating the helper. So I'm going to configuration automations and scenes and I'm going to the option helpers and then I'm going to add the helper down here click on add helper I'm choosing toggle and I'm going to give this helper a name let's call it power underscore room and the icon is MDI power and I'm going to create it so if I scroll down, I now have an option here, power room, input boolean, power room. That is my helper that I'm going to use to steer all the automations. Now, we have the helper, and now we need the custom button card. That custom button card is not default in Home Assistant, but you can install it through Hex. If you don't have Hex installed in your Home Assistant install, then look at my video uh, how to install it and then come back to this video. So we're going to Hex. In this case, we go to front end 
And in front end, we can install the custom button card. For that, we go to explore and download repositories, and we're going to search for the repository button card. And here it is, Lovelace button card for Home Assistant. Click on it. Now you can click on download this repository with hex over here. We are clicking download. So now it's going to be installed. And it says I have to reload my browser. Do I want to do that? Yes, I want it. And now I have my button card installed. So at this moment, we have the helper set up and we have the button card set up. So now create a button in our Lovelace dashboard. For that, I'm going to, in my case, tutorials, but you can go to your own dashboard, of course. Uh, I already created a custom button automation tab. So I'm clicking here on edit dashboard and I'm going to add a card. If I scroll down, then I'm going to see there that there is the custom button card all the way down. So I click on the custom button card and unfortunately this custom button card can only be configured using YAML. I already had some code prepared for this uh, and I'm going to explain you what this does. Well, basically, it says the type is custom button card, so that's the type of the card. And then it's saying it will switch the following entity. And this is the helper that it will switch. So it will switch the input underscore boolean dot power underscore room. Um, you can set show state on false or true. If I set it on true, you will see that it shows the state here, but I would like to have it on false. Um, I can give it a name, uh, in my case it's room, uh, the icon is MDI power, so it shows this power icon. And now it's interesting, I have the two states, I have a state on and a state off. These are the states that the input boolean dot power room can have. So this input boolean can have a state on and can have a state off. And in the case it has a state on, it's going to be green. And in case it has a state off, it's going to be gray. So I will save this, and if I click on this, you see that it now gets the state on and the color turns to green, and if I click it again, it gets the state off and the color changes to gray. So that is working, perfect. So I have this button now, and I have my helper. Um, next, what we should do is creating the trigger automation. So for that, we are going to our first automation. I'm going to configuration. Then we go to automations and scenes. And now I'm going to create my first automation. So I click on add automation. I'm not going to select a blueprint, but I'm going to start with an empty automation. And I'm going to give this automation a name. Let's call it automation one power Turn on room on weekdays. In this case, it has a trigger and the trigger is a specific time. So I go to time and I'm going to say, and I want to turn on the power at 8 a.m. Then I'm going to add a condition because I only want to happen this on weekdays. So I'm going to set add condition. Again, we go to time and I'm going to only enable the weekdays. So Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to disable. And now we go to action. And what we want this automation to do is to toggle the Boolean helper that I just created. So I'm going to call a service and the service is called, if you search for boolean, input boolean turn on in this case, because I want to turn it on. And now I'm going to choose the boolean that I want to turn on as soon as this automation runs. I'm going to choose the entity and I called it power room. So this automation is now ready. It runs at eight o'clock during weekdays and it will turn on the power room boolean helper. 
So let's save this. And let's, well, let's just test it. And let's see what is the time currently. The time is 1.39. So let's say at 0, 0.1. 41 p.m. Save it. I want to trigger this as 141. So we go to tutorials and now we basically have to wait until it is 141 to see if this automation is running. Let me check. So I see it's 140 at the moment. So we have to wait a little bit to see this turn on automatically based on the automation that I just created. So let's show, I'm not touching anything. So great, it works. The automation just triggered the Boolean helper to on and that is why this button shows also uh, in green. So that works and now we can turn it off with the uh, mouse if I want. So let's just turn it off. Next step is creating the last automation, automation two, and that's actually the automation that triggers all kinds of power things in uh, a specific room. So let's go to configuration again, automation and scenes, I'm going to add an automation, start with an empty automation, and we'll give it the name automation two, uh, power toggle, room okay um i have two triggers i have a trigger on and i have a trigger off so i'm going to add both triggers here so the first trigger is a state and the entity is my boolean helper and it is my boolean helper power room so if this boolean power room goes from off to on, something has to happen. Now I'm going to add a trigger ID here. And if you don't know what trigger IDs are, watch my other video about trigger IDs and then you'll be fine, know everything about trigger IDs. I'm going to call this power on because it's going from off to on. Now I'm going to add another trigger for the power off. So that's again state the entity is power room, input boolean power room. And this one goes from on to off. So I will give this the trigger ID power off. Now we go to actions and in actions we are going to choose between the two triggers. So first we add a choose option. And we're going to add a condition. And in that condition, we're going to add trigger. Trigger ID is power on. So what would we want to trigger when the power is on? So we are going to add an action for this specific option. And let's say, in my case, I'm only going to show you triggering of a plug. Um, but you can add multiple actions, for instance, also setting the heating to specific degrees uh, or whatever. You can add a lot of actions here. But for the sake of this tutorial, I only going to show you one thing. So this was power on. So I have to choose turn on plug three. Then I'm going to add another option. We get conditions and actions again. Add condition. Trigger. Trigger ID is power off. I'm going to add an action for this option. I'm going to say, let's call this plug three also, and this one should turn it off. So what is going to happen here? What actually happens is we have two triggers that respond on the value of input Boolean power room. So one triggers on the value on and the other triggers on the value off. And if the value is on, then plug three will be turned on. And if the value is off, then plug three is turned off. So let's save this. And now I have everything in place 
to get this to work. So go to tutorials. Now let's check it out. I have a little lamp here and this lamp is connected to that plug. So let's click on the room button. Look, it works and I can turn it off too. And it also works on the automation. So basically what we did now is that we created an automation and a button that both do exactly the same thing. Okay. So this was my tutorial about setting up an automation and a button that do the same things because sometimes you want to have an automation that switches something at a specific time or at a specific event, but you also want to have a button that does exactly the same. If this helped you, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and tick the little bell and please leave a comment what you think about this. Maybe you have other ideas that work exactly the same or better. I don't know. This is my best practice, but not necessarily the best thing there is. So I'm really curious. Bye bye.